Welcome back. Michael Geiger here with Second Swing. I'm with Larry Bobka, Master Club Fitter. Today we are going to take a look inside Mr. Bobka's golf bag. Larry, at first glance I'm seeing some unique clubs. I think yep. there's going to be some models that maybe some viewers at home uh, are going to learn a, a lot about. Yep. Just walk me through it. Sure. Well, first of all, there's only 12 clubs in the bag. So I don't go to full 14. Don't hit it as far anymore. <laughs> so these are gapped out basically from you know, 230 or 240 down to, you know, sand wedge goes down to however short I need to hit it. <laughs> so, uh, might as well just start with the driver. Absolutely. Okay, got my driver here. Got my Holes for Hope charity head cover. We are big sponsors at Second Swing of this. Yes, we are. And uh, it's a great charity here in the Minneapolis area, so that's why I use this head cover. And we're just gonna pull out a Ping G425, 10 and a half degree LS Tech. Um, played with this driver only for about a month and a half so far and, and been extremely happy with it. Uh, they're very forgiving. I've seen it in fittings. Uh, so I like to launch it a little bit higher. The low spin of the LS Tech helps me uh, shaft wise. It is just the Alta CB55 regular. Yes, folks, regular. I'm old. <laughs> I'm getting slower. Love, re love regular shafts in my driver. I've actually played a regular shaft in my driver for a long time, even when I was younger, because I just like really? the feel. Yeah, I like the feel, you know. If you, if you read a lot of uh, things like uh, Nicholas talked about in his book was, you know, get the lightest, softest shaft that you can handle directionally to make the ball go farther. Yeah. So I kind of took that when I was younger and decided that, you know, that was kind of the way to go. And now as I've gotten slower, it, it really gives me perfect ball flight. I'm really happy with it. Nice. So, Well, okay. you're steering this ship. What's next? Okay. What's next is under the old school Jan Craig knit head cover, we've got a Mizuno MP650 three wood. Well, this is their titanium model they made about 10 years ago. I uh, was walking through the store one day, wasn't real happy with my three wood, pulled this off the rack, put it down. It's absolutely beautiful shape on it. Definitely. And I just love it. Hit it great. Uh, 75 gram regular shaft. And um, I just hit it really well. And I love the way it looks and it looks great behind the ball. And actually there's days where it feels like it goes as far as my driver does. Yeah. So uh, along with that, so with the success of that, we pull underneath the Bluff Creek head cover <laughs> where I play some golf and also do some teaching in the summer. Um, I've got my very beat up. We've seen that, I think we've seen this in other videos, my very beat up titanium Mizuno five wood with lead tape on it, of course. Um, same, similar shaft, it's got a Fubuki 75 in it. Um, hit, that, hit that three wood so good that I just felt like, you know, Why I wanted, not? yeah, and saw this on the rack and $39 later, and <laughs> I, did not put, I did not put the sky marks on it. Those, those came with it when I purchased it from Second Swing, and, uh, but I hit it great. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah. one of my one of my favorite golf clubs, especially if I'm playing longer golf courses. Um, I really need to have a five wood in mm -hmm. the bag. So, uh, well, let's let's dive into the irons. Let's dive into the irons, and as you see, I've got you know you're holding the bag. I don't have a stand. I've used a Jones bag for 47 years. I got my first Jones bag when I was a freshman in high school. So they've been around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I was negative 24. I and know yeah. you were. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. A um, friend of mine, Jason Hyland, owns uh, Sub 70 Golf and uh, saw him this summer when I was doing some teaching down in Illinois. And uh, he very nicely made me a set of golf clubs. Wow. Um, we started with the five through pitch. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, wanted to add a you utility five, a four iron. It's got a fast face on it, mm -hmm. kind of along, you know, the tailor-made P790, Titleist T200. Um, absolutely love it. 
you know, for a while there, and I'm not a huge fan of hybrids. Mm -hmm. Kind of always had this love-hate relationship with hybrids. And so I wanted to get a four iron in the bag, and this has just filled the gap nicely. Uh, shaft is Dynamic Gold 105 R300. It's comfortable, it's easy. Swing weights, uh, these are all at like D2. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I've played D2 for like 100 years. So spec-wise, the clubs are very similar. The only difference over the years in, in my irons from old standard links to new standard links. About 15 years ago, I went from 37.75 on a five iron to 38 inches. Okay. So I just moved because that's everybody that's started making their yep. yeah their links a little bit longer. So I went to that. Um, iron wise, I've got a set of the sub 70 639 CBs. And if you notice, these are not as old as they look <laughs> this summer, but he makes them with raw finish. And I absolutely love the look of kind of this old school mm -hmm. type of look to it. And they very quickly rusted. And my wife said, why would you buy those old clubs? <laughs> uh, I, well, because they just, I, I think it's a cool look. They frame nicely behind the golf ball. Been very happy. Same shaft as the four iron. You know, dynamic old, 105 R3, Lampkin grips on them. Basically, you know, just ordered them. They came in perfect from him and, and very happy. So I said I've only got 12 clubs in the bag. I, I, I play the same lofts basically that I've played for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are a little bit stronger, but I weaken them a little bit because I, I don't like a gap between the pitching wedge and the sand wedge. Right. I just, I, I never got comfortable in my golf bag going to a 50 or 52. So I go from, so I go from 47 degrees to 55 degrees in the sand wedge. It covers the gaps. I mean, let's be honest, I don't hit it that far anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's a big difference if, sure. if, you know, if you're somebody like Rory McIlroy where you're driving at 330, your gaps are a little bit bigger and you got to co spread cover a spread well i'm only driving at 230 or 240 so my spread isn't that big if right. i've got 14 clubs in the bag it's almost a little bit too compressed mm -hmm. so i i like the idea of just having 12 it's a good number a lot of times i might even take the three wood out and i play with 11 <laughs> clubs it's a lighter bag yeah it's i mean I, I, i've played even less i've even played with less clubs you know eight or nine and you know it's kind of fun because you got to hit golf shots yeah um, so you know i kind of touched a little bit on the irons um this thing um <laughs> this sand wedge this is actually one of the first sand wedges that i did at titleist when i went to work for titleist before there was Vokey wedges um, i did a line of, of forged wedges uh davis love a brad fax and uh, David Duval and a Steve Elkington wedge. Well, these, this came out of the forgings, and this is basically a copy of a wedge that I've played since high school, which was an old Wilson 1958 Dynapower, which is considered arguably one of the best wedges ever. Uh, so it's really the same offset, the same shape. Uh, soles a little bit different. I tend to pinch it a little bit here to give it a little bit more um, a little bit more versatility for okay. me because I don't like to pull the heel too much because I like to have the heel for sand shots um, it's got 13 degrees it's 55 degrees it's got 13 degrees of bounce on it um, when I was at Wilson there were a guy that used to play our wedges by the name of Seve Ballesteros ever heard of him yeah so Seve came in one time and we were talking about wedges and we're talking about 60 degree wedges and more because back in the 80s that's when it's they started yeah, to come into exactly. bone and and Sevy said well geez if you're no good with 55 degrees <laughs> you're going to be no good with 60. <laughs> so i've never really had a I've never really had a wedge over 55 degrees in my golf bag now i've hit 60 degree wedges mm -hmm. i think they're great i think they're you know if 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 that's your style of play my style of play was grown up 
uh, manipulating the face a lot. Back in the day, you know, you had a you had a pitching wedge and you had a sand wedge. Yeah. You didn't really have a lob wedge. I mean, I've played, I've I've tried to play with another wedge or even two more wedges in there, and you know, I get a little confused, honestly, on on picking the club and then picking the shot. In my opinion, you pick the shot and then decide how you're gonna, how you're going to hit it. Right. So. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, like I said, irons are great. I've been very happy with them. Um, well, there's one club left. Yeah, it's one a, club left. It's important. As you can see, there's a lot of lead tape on this. Uh, when I ground this originally, I ground it to the shape I wanted it to and didn't really care about it because it didn't matter to me if I put a bunch of lead tape on it. So it, it was the shape that I really wanted to have. Um, and there are two backups at home that have never been hit. Really? So, uh, so then there's then there's this thing, um, which I don't like to call it a thing, but uh, yeah, David at Goodwood probably wouldn't be happy. I I met him two years ago at our store out in Maryland, mm -hmm. and he had brought a putter in like this that he had made for his friend, and I hit three putts with it, and I said, "You have got to make me one of these." This reminds me of putters that I used growing up, uh, Spalding HBA, just a, you know, it is a full toe hang, oh, yeah. full toe hang blade, uh, not a ton of technology in it other than a face mill, but the weight, the shaft, everything, you know, gave him some specs and he built me just an absolutely great putter. I mean, it's got a ping, it's got a ping grip on it. As you can tell, it's been used a fair amount. I love, I love when they get like this and you can start seeing the steps on it because yep. then you know it's really worn. You just wipe it down a little bit with a towel. But I'm not really in the change in anything. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, play league at Chaska Town Course. Two, twice this year we had low putts on Thursday rounds and I won both of them. First time was 23 putts, the second time was 25 putts. But I also teach putting for a living, that, so I, mean, I should I should theory, I should roll it a little bit. But I yeah, I absolutely love this putter. As you see, it's beat up. I don't like putter covers. I have never been a putter cover guy. You know, he sent me one with this, and I'm like, no, we're <laughs> just gonna we're just gonna use it because, as you can tell, it kind of matches up really well with yeah. those. Okay, um, let's talk about golf ball. Yes. So let me grab let me grab. What I have honestly just switched to recently is Titleist Tour Speed. Having worked for Titleist for 19 years and played them growing up, um, I've always been used to the cover and the feel. Mm -hmm. Well, along with not hitting it as far anymore, trying to pick up maybe a little distance without giving up any short game because I only do have two wedges, so right. I really... I don't want to give anything up on the short game side. I found this ball to fly about six yards farther for me off the driver, about a half a club longer off the irons. So I'm hitting shorter clubs in, and uh, I've been very happy. Have not had any trouble putting it, chipping it, anything. So I'm pretty much a fan. Okay, perfect. So. Along with the irons, though, we have to talk about one more thing. I'll be right back. This is so. Um, this week I got these. So I have got a set here of Ping I-59s. They're new high-tech blade, and um, actually these are going to go get a ride tomorrow in 48-degree <laughs> weather here in Minnesota. Um, I'm really excited because of all the technology and having been a club designer and made a lot of clubs for a lot of players over mm -hmm. the years, I think this is a very interesting uh, design where they've hollowed out the core of a blade and put the aluminum core in there and I'm really excited to try them. Uh, I've gone, basically they're the same specs as these, I just put in their, their AWT regular iron mm -hmm. shaft. But I'm, I'm excited to give these a try. I'm, I'm interested to see how they feel. I have not hit them yet. All I have did was I got them this week. I checked the loft and lies, which were perfect. And um, I'm ready to go play golf with them tomorrow. Perfect. So 
Uh, any questions about my bag? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> most of it was the, the, I really would like to just dive in on the wedge thing a little bit more. I think, okay. I think you're so used to seeing players like Phil Mickelson, for example, will have as many as five wedges in the bag. Right. You are, you are very comfortable with two. Yep. Do you think more amateurs at home could, could do better to kind of reduce the thinking from their game, from their short game, and just learn to hit more shots with one wedge instead of relying on you know, four or five wedges. So you were asking a little bit about the wedges yep. and about being comfortable. Uh, yeah, I mean, my comfort level comes from, especially being an instructor of short game and putting, I think it's all about picking a shot first. Yep. Okay, I think you have got to pick the shot you want to play before you decide to pick the club. You know, I, I work with a lot of young players, I work with college players, high school players who immediately grab the 60 degree wedge when they're close to the green. Well, that's not really right because, you know, I got mentored by Phil Rogers and Phil Rogers was all about, hey, you only chip it as high as you need to. If there's nothing in front of you, get it on the green and get it running like a putt. Mm -hmm. Your margin for error is much lower, okay? So I always, I, I always look at a shot and go, well, first of all, is it, is it a wedge? Is it a sand wedge? Am I chipping with a seven iron? But what's the shot? What do I really need to do? How am I gonna hit the shot? And especially in you know, a lot of modern course design where you've got two level greens, right. you know, trying to just fly a 60 degree wedge back there, that's a hard, that's a hard shot. You're asking a lot of your talent and especially if you don't practice your short game right. a lot. You know, why not become a master of a 56 degree wedge or a 55 degree wedge? And then once you do that, then you can take those shots that you play with that and maybe get a, you know, a 60 degree wedge where maybe it gives you a little more versatility. Maybe your golf course tends to have some deep bunkers or tough shots, but Really, at the end of the day, it's about picking the shot and playing the shot. And, and, and it's very rarely in a round of golf do I ever feel like that I need more loft and, you know, oh, by the way, this is 55, but I also can roll it up to, I can roll it open to yep. 65 degrees easily. So, um, you know, that's kind of how I look at it. Plus, I also growing up, I used to be the afternoon starter at a very busy semi-private golf course and there was a there was a practice green and a bunker next to it. So if I wasn't on the tee getting people started off, I was I was wearing that thing I out. was I was wearing I was wearing sand wedges out, you know, just learning and hitting shots. And I think that's where I think what we forget sometimes is it, it it's great having all the technology. It's mm -hmm. great having all the different lofts but you still have to play golf shots, and especially when it comes to short game. And that's kind of like with the putter too. I mean, I just look at it and go, hey, I want to know if I'm not putting well today, my putter's going to tell me. Yeah. There, is, there, is no, there is no margin for error in a putter that I have that has no technology, has a lot of toe hang, but I built a stroke with- A lot of face rotation. A lot of face rotation, 8802, mm -hmm. end shafted blades. That's what I'm used to. I grab a putter that's face balance and it's like, it doesn't feel good. I yep. pull them to the left. Can I putt with them? Sure. It, it's a period of adjustment, but I don't practice anymore. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, it's overrated. You know? Yeah, I just go out and play and, you know, so I just like having, I kind of look at my golf clubs as old friends, mm -hmm. you know, and I think we all need to do that. I think you need to get golf clubs in your bag that, you know, one of the great things about having a store like this is we have a lot of things. Yes. We have a lot of clubs. Absolutely. One of the bad things about having a store like a lot of clubs, sometimes players don't necessarily look at it correctly and talk about, okay, well, I'm not hitting my three wood well. Why am I not hitting a three wood well? Rather than just trading in their old one and buying a new one, get fit. Mm -hmm. Talk to one of the fitters understand why you're not hitting that club very well. You know, I'm very fortunate, I play, golf, I play golf every Thursday with one of our great master fitters, uh, Aaron Roth. You know, we chat all the time. He, you know, he'll ask me stuff about what I think about his clubs. 
I ask him stuff about my club. Hey, you know, I'm not hitting it. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll walk by me after third hole. He goes, why is the ball so far up in your stance? What are you doing that for? <laughs> you know, then you make an adjust. But I think, you, you know, you, you got to have that kind of yep. feedback. Yep. And, it, and it's always been great to have that kind of feedback. And, and that's, what, that's what tour players have. Mm -hmm. and that's why they're so good. One, they've got great God-given talent, but, but they have people around them that help them play better. We have, a, we have a team of people at Second Swing, all the locations, online, that can help you become a better player. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Well, and that's the big takeaway for me, Larry, is that these are the clubs that are best for you. And if you at home are looking for your own best set of clubs, we encourage you to do what Larry suggested, go into Second Swing or call online and speak to a master fitter over the phone. Larry, thank you so much for your time. Thank You're you for welcome. walking us through your bag. Not a problem. Awesome.